Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to take that French Bulldog SVG that we created and carve out a catch-all tray. So we'll go into a new project. Start by naming the project uh, French Bulldog Catch-all Tray. We can set our uh, board size now. This is going to be in five point three quarters by five and three quarters. And you want to actually measure the thickness of your stock here. Three quarter inch walnut I have is a little bit shy of that at 0.748. We've got it in there. You can actually set up your material type if you like. Um, I use walnut, so we'll put it like that so it looks a little more true to form. And then over here, there's a number of different uh, options to choose from. Importing shapes, drawing lines, uh, you can do drills if you don't want to import a circle, you can, and all of the fonts they have in there to choose from. There's also a selection of design library, um, and then these effects, which we will use in just a moment. But in here, we have the import functions, the DF, DXF, the image trace, which we basically did that function in Inkscape because there's a lot more controls in there in the last video. You can import G code directly if you made the G code somewhere else, or you can do what we're going to do now is import this SVG. And the SVG for this uh, that we created last time will be in the description if you want to download this SVG. See. Um, with the SVG, we can change what we want to do here, which is clear out the pocket, which is the black lines here. It's going to clear out. If we do shape on path, it's going to try and cut all the way through. So what I actually want to do is clear that out to, to carve out these details. And I'm actually going to use a eighth inch diameter engraving V-bit. If we use a larger bit, it will impact the size unless we make it the offset here large enough to account for that diameter of the bit. If you only have a larger bit, you can do that. It, it's all personal preference and using the tools you have um, to get the job done. And when I go and do this one more time uh, later on in an upcoming video in Fusion, you'll see where it's going to do that impact on the edge if you don't set these the offsets up correctly or if you don't use the right bit size for the offsets you chose. So now we kind of see what it's going to look like here if we carve right into the top of this, but we want a recessed pocket. So this is more like a tray. I'm going to do one more thing is copy this over. So I keep the original one without messing it up. And now I've got multiple workspaces going. Uh, once you so you have to select the SVG first. Then open your Auditor tool. I'm going to keep quarter inch just for now to, to show you what it looks like. So it has now split this other SVG into all its multiple pieces and made a, and made a duplicate of them as well. So we don't really want that. All we need is this offset we just created. So now I'm going to copy that, jump over to this one, and place it in here. We can move this right here to... Uh, 3, 3 is its center point, and then if we move this one as well, it's going to align the center points. So now I've got a trace around the outside, which is actually going to be my pocket, and I have this French Bulldog face. So I really want to do one more offset from this, and this is going to be the, the outside of the shape. We basically have three different items here. The outside part that we're going to carve, the inside pocket, and this the actual V carve of the face. So for these two, we are going to want to cut them using a different bit. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use an eighth inch um, compression bit because that's one of my favorites to use. And to make it easy to remove this, I'm going to put my tabs in parts that are going to be easy to sand off. So there I've placed those in those locations and be easy to sand off those tabs. 
this pocket isn't quite as deep as what I want, so I'm actually gonna have that pocket go in half inch, leaving a quarter inch of material. So we're gonna end up with a tray that's like that, and we're missing the face. So to get that face back, I'm gonna show you kind of what it's gonna to look like here, but it's just not gonna show it quite as well as the true shape is going to be. Now that we're done with this, I'm gonna delete that workspace. I'm gonna make a couple duplicates of this one. Carve the inside of this tray, the pocket, uh, and to keep it nice and rigid, I don't wanna cut it out yet. After the pocket, I'm gonna switch bits. I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna V-carve this out, resetting my zero to the new bottom of that pocket. Uh, you'll see when it carves, it'll make a lot more sense when you watch the video of it carving through. I don't have it to cut all the way through that eye, so it's going to use this V-bit step over to pass along that eye, which at 1% detail, it's going to pass over that many times just to get that flat spot. So I can either increase this step over detail or carve a little deeper so I don't have a flat spot. I said to carve a little deeper. It's only going to maximize the depth of a 90 degree angle. So even if I set this to full depth, it won't really go any deeper than that 90 degree size will allow it to. So tricky easel to do this. It doesn't really show you what it's going to truly look like. The closest we're going to get is this, and that's going to show us our pocket and our outline, but our detail of the face is actually going to be that sitting in that pocket. I'm going to take my eighth inch bit and cut this out. For the second pass, I'm going to come and change it to the V bit set my Z0 to the surface of that pocket that I just cut, and then carve this. And then I'm going to switch the bit back to the eighth inch compression. There's a few options here. You can either set your Z0 to the top of the material over here on the side, uh, now that that's what you have. And in order to do that, you won't be able to do, run these carves in easel, which is why you'll see I use open builds because it allows for independent setting of the zeros. Um, so I can come over here afterwards and set it to there. Or even better, set it to the top of the wasteboard so I'm not cutting too deep in the wasteboard if I got that number wrong. Does that make sense? So I'll, I'll show you guys in a few minutes how you can do that in open builds, but this is essentially how I do the tray. Now one more thing that I want to talk about is how we're going to do this last carve. Uh, if you're using easel, it doesn't allow you to set the Z height off to the side over here. So as you manually move your machine, as you manually move the machine, you would have to move it over, set your Z height of the paper or probe, and then make sure you toggle it back to where you started your toolpath from. In this case, our workplace center is going to be down here. But now that we've visualized this and everything, what I'm actually going to do on mine, since I'd like to start from the, the center point of my material and just mark down the center a nice little X, my starting point is going to be like right here in the center. I need to change it to this before I create the toolpath and then re. So I'm moving all these down to the center point, which um, totally messes up the previews, which is why I kind of like to do that last if I can. Now when I run my um, job, it's going to start off at the exact center of my stock. Uh, if you wanted to do the bottom corner like this, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, I prefer to align it to the center and not have to worry about being off at all and then having this get cut off by the side. When you do this last Z height adjustment in easel, it's, it's not going to like, you're going to have to find a fun way to do it. I don't, I don't like using easel for this. So what I like to do is use open builds so I don't cut into the wasteboard too much and leave an ugly little outline of this project. The next step here in order to use open builds or a different G-code center is to come in here to uh, advanced settings. It's in the machine tab, advanced, and I can generate the G-code and then export it and it will save that pocket file. And this is why I renamed my the little workspaces down there so that the file automatically saves with the names. And that is how I make these trays 